All right, here we go, guys. Begin another vlog. I'm right into the session. And I thought I'd show you this lovely morning. Oh, God. I only got one break. <laughs> there you go. I go down a hill and the phone was holding the only brake situation. But you see, here's my bike, my rods, and uh, my bag, my net. I've got three rods on me. I normally carry four, but I'm only going tench fishing today. So I don't need four. I only need three. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I need two, but uh, always bring a spare one with you. Learn that, especially if you're going roach fishing and all that. You never know what you might see. You might see a sneaky bike. Boom, boom, boom. See my carp. See a carp today. He's having it on the new pop up, in it? Right, anyway, guys, I'm at the lake. I'll give you a little turn around. Here we are. All right, see you when I'm set up. Ciao for now. Bye -bye. Right, guys, tench fishing today. Yay! My sneaky swim. Got a little 10 mil body, 10 pound line. And like I said, I am literally fishing for the tench today. Got a lot lighter setup. Still a helicopter rig, because obviously of what I'm fishing over. But uh, very simple, little half ounce lead. Got a PVA bag to put on it. And I'm not gonna chuck it far, but I've got a massive PVA bag. Because I know there's loads of weed down there, so at least I can get the weed to lay down a little bit. There we go. They finally shut up. That was nuts, man. That's like a load of, um, it's called magpies, I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, I've got the float out today. I really want to catch a tench. And you know, it's when I'm really, really focused on some, I will get it. It just takes me time. Because uh, you can't force these things, even though I'm really, really trying down it. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I rode, I mean, like I said, I rode past two lakes today to get to here. Literally, I could have just stopped at any of them, fished the carp puddle, you know. But no wild fish is what we're after. Wild tenchy. It's high pressure today, it's sunny, but what I'm hoping is the fish have woke up. So I'm hoping that's going to get them moving around. I might not get loads of fish today, I might only catch one in about five, six hours. Sorry, I'll just check my float. I might only catch one or something in the five or six hours, but. Right then, guys, I can proper start with tent fishing. I think it's going to go well today. I do think the ledger's going to go. I think the float's going to go. My bad. Um, I basically foul hooked the fish already. I I didn't hurt or anything. It was really quick, like on, off. Um, and I got back a little tiny scale. What? I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was broom slime or uh, eel slime or not, but whatever it was, it was a decent fish. Um, in a way, I'm hoping now that the fish are coming and they'll quickly go for a wee and then come back and we're going to float fish together. Yeah, I definitely think I'm going to catch on the float today. Where is the float? <laughs> Can you see it? Hey, buddy. Yeah, there it is there. It's a little pole float. And I'm fishing about two inches over depth. Um, let's see, can I move it around to a better light? A better light here. Yeah, that's much better. There we go, you see? So there we go. I'm not putting out hard any bait. Like I said, just corn and pellet. I'm not feeding the small fish. I've got a big hook on and two grains of corn. That's always done I've done the best in it. Otherwise, I'm hooking into loads of little red and I'm not going to hook into a tench. And trust me, I just had a bow wave out of the swim. So they're really sensitive. Um, like I said, I'd be lucky to catch one or two today. So it's, but it's definitely bubbling. Look, see the bubble? Can you see it? Just. <laughs> And I find sometimes I don't get any bubbling when I get a bite. And other times it fizz like anything and I won't get a bite. So um, I've got two grains of corn on. And if that doesn't get me a bite in the next, say, half an hour, I'm going to put on a worm. A little sneaky worm. Right. Ciao for now. Right, I'll see you back up when I zoom down. There you go. So I'm fleet fishing just here. And uh, like I said, I'm not feeding the small fish. I do not want the small fish getting my bait. Um, and, and they would drag around my float and everything. But sometimes they even come in and hit it for some weird reason. I don't know why they do that. But they do do that. They come in and keep knocking your float and stuff, man. They should tits it. And 
the reason why I'm fishing with pole float is because minimal disturbance. I can just drop it in. I've got a 13 foot float rod, so I've actually got a choice if I want to move it back or forward. But the bubbling stop now. Normally, when the bubbling stops, I get by. I find sometimes it can get really fizzing in the end. It's really annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying. Today, I put more bait out than I normally do just purely because I'm fishing for a long time and there's two ducks and he hadn't seen me put any bait out. As soon as I got here, I put bait out. So I'm hoping that's going to. I ain't got to keep putting bait in because, like I said, there ain't anything to eat in it. A tension carp. There's nothing else in here. The rudd can barely eat the corn. They're all so stunted, they're all tiny things. But if I keep putting bait in, I guarantee by the end of the day I'll start catching rudd on double corn on a size 10 up. It could be a nightmare. You know, the thing is, I'm literally pot luck if I'm in weed or not. But the hook's completely covered by corn. So I'm hoping when I pick it up into the fish, then the hook is set. I found that when I've got a hair rig and there's rudd hitting it all the time and knocking it around, the hook could get dragged into weed. Right, a little experiment. I'm going to try a worm, but I don't think he's going to get through the swim. Even if you put a massive one on a fake mag or something like that. Try. It's bubbling and stuff, but I'm just not getting the vibes here, is it? Did it, didn't I? Done it again. Oh, it's lovely tension. Lovely man tension. That's it. Coming on my hunger, man. See, I told you, didn't I? I knew they were there. Yes, 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 yes. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around because of the contrast. There you go. So you've been aware, guys, being aware. That float just flew on there. That's a cracker. It's about four pounds. In. Right, let's get this off in it. Tench. It's about three pound. Thought he's bigger. He looks a lot bigger in the water. Uh, we're talking about the tench. So you want it? Dark, black, wild. Eh? That sounded a bit sexual then, didn't it? <laughs> but that's a cracker. Only one standards. I'm really, really happy. I've been trying for this tench for ages. And I'm um, hoping we get another one today, but the worm definitely paid off. For some reason, I reckon they were just picking up the corn. Um, and uh, the worm paid off. Okay, guys, proved. Don't go for the easy option. Sometimes just go for the hard option. And that was tench fishing today. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. Right. Let's see, can I try and beat my best ever day? Let's try and get free. <laughs> I did think it was an eel to be fair at first. It's a problem, eels are massive in here. And uh, they act just like a tench when you catch them. All right, sort this out. But I'll show you what I was doing. And this is what I was on about with the, the float can normally be master over the ledger. Got two ledgers out there. They haven't done nothing today. But and presentation I know is fine out there. So there we go. A maggot and a fake uh, fake maggot on the hook and two worms. Pull this back up now. Because uh, the shank's like, you see, I'll take it off, put the worms 
doubling back on to fill up more of that hook. We nailed that. See, I told you they were holding themselves back, didn't I? I knew they were. They weren't coming that close. It was only a, you know, I reckon, 60 centimetres. <laughs> it was about a metre away from where I was originally fishing, but they just wouldn't come closer, so. I'll go to them sometimes. Guys, this is why I need a new cam, um, to get a camera, because I've run out of memory. Bloody iPhone, wasn't it? Had a screaming run off the cart rod. A little fat female. It's only about two pound. I'm really happy because it's on a stiff hinge. Oh, hey, mate. Stiff pop up. And, all right, mate, come on. There we go. Little fat female. Oh, I just can't believe I didn't get on camera, but it's one of these things, guys, you know, I'm on my own. And uh, the back uh, memory got full. And uh, this is the rig. I'm going to get it straight back out again in a minute. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to catch a few today. So there we go, the old fake maggot and pop up. Smashed it, didn't it? Right, get a photo of it. Guys, here's the helicopter rig. See, and this is why I always put out a cart rig with the float rod, because now I've had two tench because of that reason. I've sorted out my memory, so hopefully if I can get another tench on camera, it's gonna be awesome. But no my luck, I probably won't. That say no my luck, I've had good luck, haven't I? Hey, you get all negative Nancy on you, haven't I? Hey, because I didn't get on camera. It's about two, ah, you see me anyway, two pound tench. Um, so I'm really happy that I've had that result already. So I'm gonna get this out, because there's a lot of fizzing over there. This one, he can't hide. Oh, he's sat just behind that reed there. That carp was in his reeds. Come out, it's only little, about five pound. I reckon I've caught him before. A little common it is. Um, but yeah, but he was right there. I was sat behind the reeds, he didn't see me. He sneaked him. I hope he comes up with my worm. <laughs> right. So I've got a couple of hours left of the sessions now. I'm pretty happy. Caught my pop-up rake, what I made yesterday. I was pretty happy about. And that was just a full coated braid. Um, that been out there about an hour and a half. I knew I wouldn't have to recast it because I knew it was fishing. So that's a result on that one. Um, I'm hoping to catch at least one more on the float. And I just recasted the feeder rod because nothing was going on with it. Um, like I've got a bottom bait on it and it was covered in weed as I thought it would be. But I have caught on the bottom, that's what we were bottom baits, but it's just hit and miss with PVA bags, so just cast it out again with another PVA bag and hopefully uh, you can get another tenchy. And uh, I'm really, really waiting for ages for the tenchy to get on and now they're on. I'm too happy. I can come in now and I start catching them. Not loads, like I said, one or two a session every time. Depends how long you can fish for, really, you know. But, um, Again, I've got PTs tonight, so I can't fish all night, like, all day and all evening. So I'll leave about three o'clock probably. But anyway, all right, I better go for the ducks again. I'm gonna even swim. <laughs> all right, ciao, 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 ciao. Let's so just talk about the little lake, what's going on at the moment. We've got the coot, the bully. He's actually been my friend at the moment. He's chasing the ducks around because they can near his nest. And then you've got the, the what I call the pussy moorhen, which just hides in between all the bushes, just legging it from the coot constantly. And then you've got, what's it called? The ducks, the two males and the female. And uh, when that female has babies, not one of them will know which one's the dad. <laughs> That's why there's two of them. There, they're constantly trying to rape her. So uh, they'll double the chances, you know what I mean? There's two of them. She didn't mind. Yeah, <laughs> little threesome going on. But yeah, I've seen that, that same duck, same three ducks, every time. And it's like the coot. The coot's my mate at the moment. Give him a month when his babies are born, he's gonna be an asshole. He would dive on everything. He'd be like suicidal. And then the maddest thing is, when the baby gets big enough, they bully it until it leaves. And it's like horrible, you watch it, and they literally beat up their own baby till they leave. It's crazy. Um, especially on these little ponds, you know what I mean? Because obviously you can't have too many from one pond, as you see, you just put a kick off now somewhere. And there he goes. That's it. Right in summer. Oh, it's going to be pussy moorhead. It's the pussy moorhead. But yeah, he just, at the moment, he's just so, he's just like he's on steroids. <laughs> he's just going around like, rah, rah, everything like. 
I don't mind, but and give him give him a month and he's gonna be on me. <laughs> he wouldn't care like my rods are out there, it'd just be a nightmare. I remember last year he was doing it. They want it until the babies were born, there is. I think it's because they're starving for food, so. And that's what always pays to bring a bag of bread with you. So you can feed them off. Even the small fish sometimes you can feed them off. You know, I ain't putting up no small baits at all today. I wish I bought a bag of bread so I could have three ducks, I could have just fed them. <laughs> and then just go on the bank and go to sleep for a few hours. Leave you alone. Otherwise, I just keep pestering you and pestering you. Anyway, anyway it's a little random thing for you about fishing ponds. So I thought I'd do a little update. Um, I just got done by the, by the birds. Literally done by the birds. Coot come in after me giving all his praise, came in and ruined it. Grabbed all of my hook bait, pulled it out of position. So I had to reel back in. As I was reel back in, I scared a carp what was in my float, fish and swim. <laughs> Could have cried. And the ducks were relentless. So after that good start, I'm not blaming the complete bird, I think the fish had just switched off in a way. But that definitely didn't help. And there was definitely fishing going over my rod. And then when I reeled back, I definitely scared one, so. Yeah, all these things. Right, anyway, I'll leave it there for a minute and hopefully next half hour, 40 minutes, I can't, I can't beat them. Wait, you don't kind of join them, you just outsmart them. Yeah, <laughs> look what I've done. I threw grains of corn everywhere and make them search for it. <laughs> search for it, my minions. Oi, get back out, get out of the water. Stay here, there's loads of corn. <laughs> there you go, there's a little tip for you. Hide some corn around. <laughs> you see the little bit? No, don't get back in, don't get back in. Oh. I thought I'd work out a little trick then. Keep them on the bank, get a whole tin of corn and just chuck it everywhere. I ain't going near me, leave me alone. It's veggie. Right, anyway, I thought it was a bit random. <laughs> random tench fishing for you. <laughs> you get bored. <laughs> Fishing. It's got a pike on worms. Pike on worms. See them in front of me, in the reeds. Oh, mate. See them in the reeds. <laughs> that was crazy. See them in the reeds. But what is that? Hooks get easily removed. Look. Look at that. Boom. Definitely be changing the line afterwards, though. Yeah. All right, four steps. The opportunity. Got bored. Seen something in the margin messing around. Oh, I'll go for him. Right. Right, I'm not going to hurt you. you do, don't worry. Don't worry, dude. I'll even give you the wear if I could. Oi, 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 oi. Chill out, mate. It's okay. Mate, it's okay, it's okay. Mate, just, mate, just chill out. So there we go. <laughs> A little pike on worms. Going straight back in, because as we know, it's warm weather. But yeah, happy days for that one, eh? Getting straight back in. All right, mate, chill out. Just get him a little rest. They won't rest for long, mate. There we go. There we go. Little Jack Pike. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. That was awesome. Opportunity. Hey, you can't mess around. Can't mess around. Sound like a board. Seen something in the margin. Chucked the worm on its head. Zzz, got him out of there. Yeah. Pretty cool fishing. Make things happen. All right, jumping out. Catch a lot of fish. Got to be an opportunist angler. <laughs> Oh, I've got, got headshots. Oh. One thing, obviously, after every fine time you have a fish like that, I just cut off a load of line, and cut off the hook straight away. Because obviously that was a sneaky pike. But, and just bounced there on top of his head. Contrast, Jesus. That's even worse that way. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Better here. Oh. Yeah, just bounced it on its head. I just come up and grabbed it. <laughs> Took me about 30 seconds to get him to do it, but I wonder what was going on. 
So I just reeled the rod in, just dropped it on his head, like that, boom. Didn't even know I was there. Did you see this? Right then guys, that's gonna be the end of the video. Um, two tench and uh, one pike. Caught him on worms, jumping it in front of his head. Uh, sometimes you've got to make things happen when it's not going on. His morning bites, obviously, his wild tench. Uh, there's a few bubbling out there at the moment. I've still got the rods out, but I don't think anything's going to happen for about two hours now. And I know both of the rods are fishing, so it's just one of those things, you know. Um, wild fish for you. But yeah, I had a really good session. Really enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. Uh, like and subscribe, and check out some of my old fishing videos. There's one where I actually go swimming for a goldfish, and uh, I think it's titled Crucial Goldfish. And uh, I ended up going swimming in the lake after the goldfish. I got tangled up, but I saved him. Um, so yeah, check out some of my old videos, like and subscribe to my channel. Boop, boop, ciao for now.